Welcome to Grace Digital Presentation. In this video, we shall be discussing the ways of God. The ways of God remain the easiest way to walk in the fullness of all that we were designed to be. In fact, we don't need to seek for His acts if we understand His ways, because those that know His ways see His acts effortlessly. Psalm 1037 He made known His ways to Moses, His deeds to the people of Israel. This is why a man like Moses lifted up his voice to pray for direction from the Father. His prayer in Exodus chapter 33 shows the heart of a man that was truly meek and knew that he needed God. It is a prayer from the heart of a man who knew that the task before him was enormous and he would need the help of God to accomplish it. The prayer demonstrates humility in its purest form. He did not assume that because God had chosen him to lead the people out of Egypt, then the job was done. Rather, he took out time to seek the Father's face for clarity and direction. These days, it's easy to see people who think their sufficiency is themselves. The phrase self-made is thrown around a lot, but in the true sense, no one can make themselves. Let's dive deeply into Moses' prayer. Exodus 33:13 says, Now therefore I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways so that I may know you, and that I may find grace and favor in your sight, and consider also that this nation is your people. Now let's dissect the prayer. He said, If I've found favor in your sight, let me know your ways. Let me know your ways is definitely what we need to ask God often, because it is dangerous to assume that we know God's ways. At the root of assumption is pride, and the Bible speaks in Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. We must never assume to know God's ways. Rather, we should find out the way from God and seek His opinion before embarking on any project or mission. Let me know your ways is also the prayer of a humble man and the Bible describes Moses in Numbers 12, 3. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than any man who was on the face of the earth. What are treasures in the ways of God? The ways of God are the pathways to victory. You can't follow God's ways and live defeated, just like we saw in Exodus 17, 8 through 14. Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose men for us and go out and fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said and fought with Amalek, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the hilltop. Now when Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed, and when he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and he grew tired. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Then Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and one on the other side. So it was that his hands were steady until the sun set. So Joshua overwhelmed and defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this in the book as a memorial and recite it to Joshua, that I will utterly wipe out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. The ways of God makes us conquerors. See what the Bible said in 1 Samuel 30, 3-20. When David and his men came to the town, it was burned, and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they were too exhausted to weep. Now David's two wives had been captured, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite. Further, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. For all of them were embittered, each man for his sons and daughters. But David felt strengthened and encouraged in the Lord his God. David said to Abiathar the priest, Abimelech's son, Please bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought him the ephod, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this band? Will I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you will certainly overtake them, and you will certainly rescue. So David went, and he and the six hundred men who were with him, and came to the brook Bezor. There those remained behind. But David pursued, he and four hundred men, for two hundred were too exhausted to cross the brook Bezor, stayed behind. They found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread, and he ate, and they gave him water to drink, and they gave him a piece of a fig cake, and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his energy returned, for he had not eaten bread or any water to drink for three days and three nights. David said to him, 
To whom do you belong and where are you from? He said, I am a young man from Egypt, a servant of an Amalekite, and my master abandoned me when I fell sick three days ago. We made a raid on the Negev of the Cherethites and on that which belongs to Judah and on the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. Then David said to him, Will you take me down to this band? And he said, Swear to me by God that you will not kill me or turn me over to the hand of my master, and I will bring you down to this band. When he brought David down, the Amalekites had disbanded and spread over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. Then David struck them down from twilight until the evening of the next day, and not a man of them escaped, except four hundred young men who rode camels and fled. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken, and rescued his two wives. Nothing of theirs was missing, whether small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything that had been taken. David recovered it all. So David captured all the flocks and herds, and drove those animals before him and said, This is David's spoil. The ways of God brings prosperity. Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will be successful. The ways of God are the ways of salvation and true freedom. John 3, 1-9 says, Now there was a certain man among the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler among the Jews, who came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know without any doubt that you have come from God as a teacher. For no one can do these signs, these wonders, these attesting miracles that you do, unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless a person is born again, he cannot ever see and experience the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter his mother's womb a second time and be born, can he? Jesus answered, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be surprised that I have told you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it is coming from and where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be possible? The ways of God end emptiness. Isaiah 48, 21 says, They did not thirst when he led them through the deserts. He made the waters flow out of the rock for them. He split the rock and the waters flowed. The ways of God are free from anxiety and worries. Matthew 6, 25-34 says, Therefore I tell you, stop being worried or anxious about your life, as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body as to what you will wear. Is life not more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you by worrying can add one hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and wild flowers of the field grow? They do not labor nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory and splendor dressed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive and green today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry or be anxious, saying, What are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, but do not worry, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first and most importantly seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you also. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The ways of God are free from burdens. Matthew 11, 25-30 says, At that time Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this way was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. 
And no one fully knows and accurately understands the Son except the Father. And no one fully knows and accurately understands the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal Him. Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What a deep and fervent prayer it is to ask for understanding about God's ways. God desires that we would seek Him this way because He has so much to show us. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for having the heartfelt desire to teach me your ways. Thank you because in your way is all I need to make the most of this life. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I will never get to the point where I think I know it all and therefore do not think I need your leading. Rather, by your Spirit's wisdom, I will keep seeking and walking in your ways so as to live a life of victory. Amen.